with God's love and compassion as we mourn the repose in the Lord of Metropolitan Hermit of blessed memory. On behalf of the Holy Apartheid Synod and the entire Greek Orthodox Archdiocese of America, I extend to you and all the faithful of the Orthodox Church in America my deepest and heartfelt condolences. Be assured that in a spirit of brotherly compassion, I am praying for the repose of his soul. May our Lord Jesus Christ give him rest and place him among the saints. We believe, based on the experience of Christ's passion and suffering, that even after the crucifixion, God defeated death and triumphed through, through the resurrection. The late Metropolitan was not only an inspiring figure of the OCA, but he was also an active member of SCOBA, with a distinctive sense of responsibility for Orthodox synergy and unity in our country. May his soul abide in the tabernacle of the righteous, the mansions of the saints, and the bosom of Abraham. With consolations and love in the Lord Jesus Christ, I remain with eternal love in Christ. I see the fullest Archbishop of America, the Greek Orthodox Archdiocese of America. Your Beatitude, Metropolitan Deacon, your eminence as the grace his beloved hierarchs of the Orthodox Church in America, together with his reverend clergy and Christ loving faithful. Greetings in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, who is the resurrection and the life. We are deeply saddened to learn of the repose of the Beatitude Metropolitan Hermit. In addition to being my close personal friend, he was a true friend and partner of our Antiochian Archdiocese, like all the Metropolitans of the Orthodox Church in America over the years. The friendship between our hierarchs and the churches run deep. We are one family of Orthodox faithful, and therefore your loss today is our loss. Your grief is our grief. Nevertheless, we also share in your joy and gratitude in remembering his Beatitudes years of service and the blessings of his ministry. His Beatitude was frank and straightforward in conversation and active in ministry. Throughout his 49 years in the sacred episcopacy, in addition to his art pastoral oversight of the parish and the clergy, he was especially committed to theological education as a teacher, trustee, and rector of St. Keaton Seminary. The seminary was very close to his heart, and generations of priests and deacons have benefited from his labors in the fields. The training and formation they received have in turn benefited parishes across the land. Joined by my brother Hyers and the Reverend Clergy, esteemed trustees and pious faithful of our archdiocese, I offer sincere condolences on the passing into eternal life of his Beatitude Metropolitan Hermit. May his memory be eternal, and may God grant comfort to all who mourn him. Yours in Christ, Joseph, Archbishop of New York, and Metropolitan of all of North America, Antiochian Orthodox Christian Archdiocese of North America. Your Beatitude, Metropolitan Tikon, our Commander of Sergius, Abbot of St. Tikon's Monastery, the members of the Holy Synod of Bishops and the monastic fathers and brothers of St. Tikon's Monastery, and the faithful of the Orthodox Church in America. May God grant you all many years. On behalf of myself and all the clergy and faithful of the Diocese of Oakland, Charleston, and the mid atlantic I want to express my condolences on the falling asleep in the Lord of the Beatitude Metropolitan Herman, retired primate of the Orthodox Church in America. Throughout his life, his Beatitude demonstrated a love for Christ and his church, serving a wide variety of ministries and ordained roles with distinction. The Orthodox Church of all jurisdictions, the Orthodox Church of all jurisdictions throughout North America have benefited greatly from his life and ministry, for which we are grateful to God and the Holy Trinity. May you and all the faithful of the Orthodox Church in America take great comfort in the words of the Holy Apostle Paul, O death, where is your sting? O Hades, where is your victory? But thanks be to God who gives us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. May the Lord grant you his beatitude, Metropolitan Herman, that victory which comes from Christ to rest with all the saints, and may his memory be eternal. Bishop Thomas, Auxiliary Bishop, Diocese of Oakland, Charleston, and Mid Atlantic, Antiochian Orthodox Christian Archdiocese of North America. Your Beatitude, dear brother and consultant in Christ. On behalf of the fullness of the Serbian Orthodox Church and in our own name, please accept expressions of our most sincere condolences on the occasion of the falling asleep in the Lord of Metropolitan Herman, retired primate of the Orthodox Church in America. 
The life raft of the Met of Metropolitan Hermit of Blessed Memory was filled with zealous service for our Lord Jesus Christ and the Holy Orthodox Church, fulfilling its high-ranking and responsible art pastoral duties entrusted to him in the Orthodox Church in America. May our Lord Jesus Christ, who is the resurrection and the life, grant rest of the soul of Metropolitan Hermit in a place of righteous where there is no sickness or sorrow or sign that life is lasting. May the memory of his blessed figure be eternal with love in Christ the Lord. Orthelia, Archbishop of Petch, Metropolitan of Belgrade, and Karlovici, and the Serbian Patriarchs. To the Beatitude, Teek on Archbishop of Washington, Metropolitan of All America and Canada. Your Beatitude, beloved brother in the Lord. It is with deep sadness we receive the news of the falling asleep of the Lord as we added to Metropolitan Hermit. Metropolitan Hermit with his life demonstrated love and faithfulness to our Lord Jesus Christ. In his various positions in the church, as a parish priest, as a teacher at St. Tecon Seminary, as a deputy abbot of St. Tecon's Monastery, as a diocesan bishop, as well as the primate of the Orthodox Church in America, he took care of his past church and he enhanced it with love, humility, and wisdom. With deep respect, we remember his official visit to our local church in 2004 and his patronal words that resounded on many different places of our country. Now, with earthly journey, but now, when the earthly journey of Metropolitan Hermit has fulfilled, we turn with a prayer to our Lord to open his arms to him and receive him into his kingdom. To be added to, please accept our sincere condolences. May Almighty God receive the soul of the deceased Metropolitan Hermit grant him a blessed place of rest and make his memory eternal with love in Christ, Rastislav, Archbishop of Kreshov, Metropolitan of the Czech lands in Slovakia. The Beatitude, most beloved Vladika, fellow art pastors. The news of the repose of his Beatitude, Metropolitan Hermann, brought deep sadness into our hearts, and on behalf of his eminent Mark, Metropolitan of Berlin in Germany, the Synod of Bishops of the Orthodox Church in America, the Russian Orthodox Church, outside of Russia and on my own behalf, I express my deepest condolences to your reality to the Holy Synod, clergy, and flock of the Orthodox Church in America. We have all heard the belief that when a priest departs to the Lord, a joyful and warm meeting takes place with his numerous spiritual children to be baptized, married, instructed, confessed, communed, and in this case, ordained, not to mention the bright and personal meeting with Christ himself. May this great, great meeting with the risen Lord and his triumphant church become the comforting beginning of eternal rest with the saints for his beatitude, Metropolitan Harmon. Yours in Christ, Camille, Archbishop of San Francisco, Western America, Secretary of the Synod of Bishops of the Russian Orthodox Church of China, Russia. And finally, for this evening, your beatitude, dear brother, who celebrated the Lord Jesus Christ. With deep sorrow, I received the news of the repose of the Beatitude Metropolitan Herman, retired primate of the Orthodox Church in America. On behalf of all the clergy and laity of the Holy Autonomous Orthodox Church in Japan, I sincerely express my deep condolences for the soul of the newly departed hire of a genuine ecumenical and ecclesiastical mind who fraternally showed his love and compassion and considerable concern for the Orthodox flock of Japan. The Holy Autonomous Orthodox Church in Japan, Japan remains in prayers for the faithful of the Orthodox Church in America, feeling such a great loss, and asks our Lord Jesus Christ that the Orthodox Church in America may receive encouragement from the Comforter, the Spirit of Truth, in the difficult transitional period. The Holy Autonomous Orthodox Church in Japan honors its evidence of whole life with missionary work and spiritually encouraged a great number of Orthodox Christians both in America and Japan, and eloquently manifests the unity, unity of the Orthodox Christians in the United States. With intercessions for all the clergy and the faithful of the morning Orthodox Church in America, I remain. May God rest in, may God rest in together with the righteous, may his memory be eternal, with love and the risen Lord, Daniel, Archbishop of Tokyo, Metropolitan.
and ever and unto ages of ages. Amen. O most holy Trinity, have mercy on us. O Lord, cleanse us from our sins. O Master, pardon our transgressions. O Holy One, visit and heal our infirmities for thy name's sake. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever and unto ages of ages. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one.
Confirm to thy servant thy promise, which is for those who fear thee. Forsake thy walk wall, thy statues have been my songs in the house of my pilgrim. I remember thy name in the night, O Lord, and keep thy law. This blessing has fallen to me, that I have kept thy precepts. The Lord is my portion. I promise to keep thy words.
Comfort me according to thy promise, to thy servant. Let thy mercy come to me that I may live, for thy law is my delight. Let the godless be put to shame, because they have subverted me in the Nile. As for me, I will meditate on thy precepts. testimonies of thy mouth. Forever, O Lord, thy word is firmly fixed in the heavens, thy faithfulness endures to all generations. Thou hast established the earth, and it stands fast. By thy appointment they stand this day, for all things are thy servants. Thy law had that been my delight, I should have perished in my affliction. I will never forget thy precepts, for by them thou hast given me life. I am thine, save me, fast sought thy precepts. No wicked law in way to destroy me, but I considered thy testimonies. I have seen a limit to all their perfection. But thy commandment is seemingly broad. Although I love thy law, it is my meditation all the day. Thy commandment make me wiser than all my enemies, for it is ever with me. I have more understanding than all my teachers, for thy testimonies are my meditation. I understand more than the ages, for I keep thy precepts. I hold back my feet from every evil way. In order to keep thy word, I do not turn aside from thy ordinances, for thou hast taught me. How sweet are thy words to my taste. Sweeter than honey to my mouth, through thy precepts I get understanding, therefore I hate every false way. Thy word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. I have sworn an oath and confirmed it to observe thy righteous ordinances. I am sorely afflicted, give me life, O Lord, according to thy word. Accept my offering of praise, O Lord, and teach me thy ordinances. I hold my life in my hand continually, but I do not forget thy love. The wicked have laid a snare for me, but I do not stray from thy precepts. Thy testimonies are my heritage forever. Here they are, my joy of my heart. I apply my heart to for my statutes forever to the end. I hate double-minded men, but I love thy law. Thou art my hiding place and my shield. I hope in thy word. Thank you. 
position and my hope hold me up that I may be safe in every regard. For thy sight is continually. transgression which he has committed, whether by word or deed or thought, for thou art a good God who lovest mankind. There is no man who lives and does not sin. Thou alone art without sin. Thy righteousness to all eternity and thy word is truth. Thou art the resurrection and the life and the repose of thy newly departed servant. The ever to be heard metropolitan hermit has fallen asleep, O Christ our God. And to thee do we ascribe glory together, thy Father, who is for the everlasting and the Holy Good and Life in Spirit, now and ever and unto ages, ages. Amen. Turn to me and be gracious to me, as is thy want towards those who love thy name. Keep steady my steps according to thy promise, and let no decree get dominion over me. Judgments, 
Thou hast appointed thy testimonies in righteousness and in all faithfulness. My zeal consumes me because my foes forget thy words. Thy commandments are my delight. Thy testimonies are righteous forever. Give me understanding that I may live. Alleluia. With my whole heart I cry, answer me, O Lord, I will keep thy statutes. I cry to thee, save me, that I may observe thy testimonies. I rise before dawn and cry for help. I hope in thy words. For the watches of the night, that I may meditate upon thy promise. Hear my voice and thy steadfast love, O Lord, and thy justice preserve my life. They draw near who persecute me with evil purpose. They are far from thy law. Ah, thou art near, O Lord, and all thy commandments are true. Long have I known from thy testimonies that thou hast founded them forever. Look on my affliction and deliver me, for I do not forget thy law. Plead my case and cause and redeem me. Give me life according to thy promise. Salvation is far from the wicked, for they do not seek thy statutes. Great is thy mercy, O Lord. Give me life according to thy justice. are my persecutors and my adversaries, but I do not swerve from thy testimonies. I look at the faithfulness with disgust, and because they do not keep my commandments, consider how I love thy precepts, preserve my life according to thy steadfast law. The sum of thy word is truth, and every one of thy righteous ordinances endures forever. Princes persecute me without cause, but my heart stands in awe of thy words. I rejoice at thy word like one who finds great spoil. I hate and abhor falsehood, but I love thy law. Seven times a day I praise thee for thy righteous ordinances. Great peace have those who love thy law. Nothing can make them stumble. I hope for thy salvation, O Lord, and I do thy commandments. My soul keeps thy testimonies. I love them exceedingly. I keep thy precepts and testimonies, for all my ways are before thee. Let my cry come before thee, O Lord, give me understanding according to thy word. Let my supplication come before thee, deliver me according to thy word. Thank you. 
We beseech thee to receive the soul of thy servant and grant him rest in the bosom of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and give him the crown of thy righteousness, the portion of the saved, in the glory of thine elect. And for those things which in this world he accomplished for thy name's sake, may he receive a rich reward in the mansions of the saints through the grace and bounties and love toward mankind of thine only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Make him worthy, O Lord. 
from the epistle of the holy apostle Paul to the Roman. As a friend of Brethren, therefore as sin came into the world, through one man in death through sin, and so death spread to all men, because all men sin, sin indeed was in the world before the law was given, but sin is not counted where there is no law. Yet death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over those whose sins were not like the, the transgressions of Adam, who was a type of the one who was to come. But the free gift is not like the trespass, and if many die through the one man's trespass, much more have the grace of the one man, Jesus Christ, abound for many. And the free gift is not, and the free gift is not like the effect of the one man's sin. For, ju for the judgment following one's trespass brought condemnation, but the free gift following many trespasses brings justification. If because of one man's trespass death reigned through that one man, much more would those who receive the abundance of grace and the free gift of righteousness reign in the life, th in the life through the one man, Jesus Christ. Then the one man shall pass led to condemnation for all men, so one man's act of righteousness leads to the equal of life for all men. For as by one man's disobedience many were made sinners, so by one man's obedience many will be made righteous. Law came in to increase the trespass, but where sin increased, grace abound all the more, so that sin reigned in death. Grace also might reign through righteousness to eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And to thy spirit, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Let's kiss you, love us, cross it, and take it all.
Therefore, we entreat thee, O Lord our God, the rest of the sea. In the book of Abraham, and Isaac, and Jacob, and the soul of thy servant, and the father, and the son of the son of the son of the priest, and our fellow minister, the soul of the sea, and the house of the sea, and the hope of resurrection unto life eternal. And thou didn't disappoint him, to minister to all thy church on earth, so also they came to be a minister in the same way that they came to the altar. O Lord, and thou didn't adorn him with the spirit of the church one and all men, and thou didn't also speak him unto them to the glory of the angels. Thou didn't know that the Lord Christ is life upon earth, in the same way, thank you, the glorious to the part of the Son, present the Son of the same, and never hear from the soul of the Lord's work in the Holy Ages, and then both easy on the sight, without the resurrection, and the life and the soul of the resurrection of the Lord, and the Son of the Christ of God, to be the same story to the Holy Ages, and 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 the Holy Ages. Such is the generation of those who seek him, who seek the face of the God of Jacob. Oh. 
glory may come in. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Who is this King of glory, the Lord of hosts? He is the King of glory. Let us hear the holy. 
days and ye shall never thirst. But I said to you that you have seen me, and yet you do not believe. All that the Father gives to me will come to me, and he who comes to me I will not cast out. For I have come down from heaven, not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. And this is the will of him who sent me, that I should lose nothing of that which he has given me, but raise it up on the last day. Look upon 
the face of thine anointed, for a day in thy court is better than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of wickedness. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. For the Lord God is a sun and shield. He bestows favor and honor. No good thing does the Lord withhold from those who walk uprightly. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. O Lord of hosts, blessed is the man who trusts in thee.
For as by a man came death, by a man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ shall all be made alive. But each in his own order, Christ the firstfruits, then at his coming those who belong to Christ. Then comes the end, when he delivers the kingdom to God the Father, after destroying every rule and every authority and power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. For God has put all things in subjection under his feet. But when it says all things are put in subjection under him, it is plain that he is accepted who put all things under him. When all things are subjected to him, then the Son himself will also be subjected to him who put all things under him, that God may be everything to everyone.
like hearing breath made upon it. I have a holy command. Therefore hast thou called me who am subject to the corruption of sin, for thou who is love of mankind, the good of the God is compassion. Grant me with thy saints, O Lord. I do hear that with thy saints, O God, unto him whom thou hast called. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the sons of God. When the soul is pardoned from the body, fearful is the mystery and terrible to all men. For the soul goes forth lamenting, and the body is committed to the earth and hidden from sight. Therefore, since we too have learned our final end, let us entreat the Savior, crying aloud with tears, Remember us also, O Lord, when thou comest in thy kingdom. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Why do you mourn me so violently, O man? Why do you clamor so vainly? He who is called hence proclaims to all, Death is a rest unto all men. Therefore, let us listen to the voice of Job when he says, Death is rest unto man, but grant rest for thy saints, O God, unto him whom thou hast taken. Blessed are you, and men shall revive you and persecute you, and shall say, O man, of evil against you falsely for my sake. All the all wise clearly foretold translation hence, teaching all men that the dead shall rise again incorruptible, and we shall all be changed by divine command. Then shall the trumpet ring out with dreadful alarm, and they who in all the ages have gone unto their rest shall arise from their sleep, but grant rest with thy saints, O God, unto him whom thou hast taken. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. He who has gone hence and lies dead in the grave cries out to all in gracious reconciliation, Come to me, you born of earth, and behold the beauty of the body all turned to blackness. Wherefore, brethren, having learned from this our own end, let us appeal to the Savior, crying out in tears, Grant rest with thy saints, O God, and to him whom thou hast taken. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. O seed, O lady, you supernaturally conceived in your womb the God who was before all the ages, and bore him in the flesh, both God and man, without change of essence, and with essence still unmingled. Therefore we always acknowledge you as Theotokos, and unto the God who was born of you we cry with faith, remember us also in thy kingdom. Let us attend. Peace be unto all. Unto your spirit. Wistful. Comfort you and honest in the sixth tone. Blessed is you thou hast chosen and taken a Lord. Blessed is he whom thou hast chosen and taken a Lord. His soul shall dwell with the blessed.
For to this end Christ died and lived again, that he might be Lord both of the dead and of the living. And to your spirit, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. sentence and blameless in thy judgment. Behold, I was brought forth in iniquity, and in sins did my mother conceive me. Behold, thou desirest truth in the inward being. Therefore, teach me wisdom in my secret heart. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Fill me with joy and gladness. Let the bones which thou hast broken rejoice. Hide not thy face from my sins, and blot out my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and put a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of thy salvation, and uphold me with a willing spirit. Then will I teach transgressors thy ways, and sinners will return to thee. Deliver me from blood guiltiness, O God, thou God of my salvation, and my tongue will sing aloud of thy deliverance. O Lord, open thou my lips, and my mouth shall show forth thy praise. For thou hast no delight in sacrifice, were I to give a burnt offering, thou wouldst not be pleased. The sacrifice acceptable to God is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, O God, thou wilt not despise. Do good to Zion in thy good pleasure, rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. Then wilt thou delight in right sacrifices and burnt offerings and whole burnt offerings. Then bulls will be offered on thine altar.
of thy departed servant, the new, uh, newly departed metropolitan Herman, in a place of brightness, a place of refreshment, a place of repose, where all sickness, sighing, and sorrow have been led away, for in every transgression which he has committed, whether by word, deed, or thought. For thou art a good God and lovest mankind, because there is no man who lives and does not sin. For thou only art without sin, thy righteousness is all to all eternity, and thy word is true.
to learn, but none can teach you right. Do they remember their own as we do them, or have they forgotten all who mourn and sing? Alleluia. Leave the dead, mindful friends, and approach the grave with mindfulness. Look carefully and ready your feet. All you have fallen into corruption there. All the flower of life is faded. There are dust and ashes and worms. All is silent there, and no man sings. Lo, we now behold him who lies here, but still never lie before us any, and shall never lie before us any more. Lo, already his tongue is still, and lo, his mouth has ceased to speak. Farewell, my friends, my children. Farewell, O brethren. Farewell, O my comrades, for I go forth upon my way, but make commemoration of me with this song. Alleluia. Other former friends and King Paul have brought before us and return to life to tell us how they fare, wherefore we often ask if we will see each other. Shall we see our brethren there? Shall we there be able to say the song? Alleluia. The Lord on the of eternity and his ones condemned. With downcast faces we present ourselves before the only God eternal. Where then is comeliness? Where then is love? Where then is the glory of this world? There none of these things will aid us, but only offers to say this song. Oh, is this untimely vexation of mortals, yet one hour and all things shall pass away. For in hell there is no repentance, nor further remission. There is a worm that is not sleep, there is a land of darkness and shadow, where I must be judged. For I was not eager to recite the song. Alleluia. 
Thou lovest mankind, and grant that he may sing unto thee, blessed art thou, O God, our Redeemer. Oh God, 
the newly departed, ever to be remembered, Metropolitan Hermit, departed this life, and that he may be pardoned all his sins, both voluntary and involuntary. Of thy great mercy, O Lord. 
of timber on dance, praise him with strings and pipes. Strangers of the ACM for he comes to Valentine me. Nature is his all my force. It takes old men habits and wise ones. It slays the teachers of ancient philosophies. Bishops, pastors, and every nature of mortals. But let us cry aloud with tears because of thy great mercy, O Lord. Give us unto him whom thou hast taken by thy command. Praise him with sounding cymbals, praise him with loud flashing cymbals. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. He who lived in godliness and was with one as thy priest, O Christ, the sacrificer and minister of thy mysteries divine. By thy divine command, has passed from the clamor of this life unto thee. Save him who has priest on his except O Savior. And because of thy great mercy, grant him rest with the just. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. We have come to the knowledge of God, who was incarnate of you, our virgin Theotokos. Entreat him that he will save our souls. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, good will toward men. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee, we glorify thee. We give thanks to thee for thy great glory. O Lord, Heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, accept our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For Thou alone art holy, Thou alone art Lord Jesus Christ, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Every day will I bless thee and praise thy name forever, even unto ages of ages. Lord, thou hast been a refuge from generation to generation. I said, Lord, have mercy on me. Heal my soul, for I have sinned against thee. Lord, I flee unto thee. Teach me to do thy will, for thou art my God. For with thee is the fountain of life, and in thy light shall we see light. Continue thy mercy unto those who know thee. Vouchsafe, O Lord, to keep us this day without sin. Blessed art thou, O Lord, the God of our fathers, and praised and glorified is thy name forever. Amen. Let thy mercy be upon us, O Lord, even as we have set our hope on thee. Blessed art thou, O Lord, teach me thy statutes. Blessed art thou, O Master, make me to understand thy commandments. Blessed art thou, O Holy One, enlighten me with thy precepts. Thy mercy, O Lord, endureth forever, and despise not the works of thy hands. To thee belongeth worship, to thee belongeth praise, to thee belongeth glory. To the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. What pleasure life is not mixed with grief? What glory stands unchanged upon earth? All things are feeble shadows and deluding dreams. Yet that takes them away in a single moment. But in the light of thy countenance, O Christ, and in the sweetness of thy beauty, give rest unto him whom thou hast chosen, as thou art the lover of mankind. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not walk.
Children of God, the ever memorable Metropolitan Herman, departed this life, that he may be pardoned all his sins, both voluntary and involuntary.
us and be merciful unto us for as much as he is good and loveth mankind. us 
who thirst for him. Metropolitan Hermann bore his cross, and he could thereby also encourage those who bore their own particular crosses. Though he would use more straightforward language, he would try to convey the sense of these words of the elder Emilianos of the Holy Mountain, who writes, the cross, the crisis that engulfs me, the pain that I feel, is a kind of birth pang, for it is the initial movement of my soul, longing to be united to God. And my longing for God is met by God's longing for me. For it is God who is seeking me in and through my suffering, in and through my pain, so that in the end, the cross is not so much the agony of man struggling to find God, but the agony of God struggling to find man. By his life and through his words, Metropolitan Herman often gave witness of a man who is pursuing God and who knows that God is pursuing him. We can envision that this is how he prayed before the icons in his icon corner. And we know that this is how he served at the holy altar and in all the divine services. Those divine services did not begin at the time announced in the bulletin. They began when Metropolitan Hermann entered the church and the altars. The singing of Come Let Us Worship by the clergy for the little entrance at the divine liturgy was not initiated by an appointed singer or deacon but by Metropolitan Herman himself, clearly and forcefully singing out Fidi Dita Proclamitia. It was the same for ordinations. It was the same for baptism. It was the same for funerals. At every opportunity, he would take the lead with his voice, with his hands, or with his feet. There are those who would say, that Metropolitan Herman served too quickly. Yet I know of one seminarian's wife, a mother with young children, who counted it a mercy for the sake of her restless children that some of her services were shorter. <clears throat> there were those who would say that Metropolitan Herman was not a real monastic because he rarely set foot in the monastery building. And yet he served as a spiritual father for many months, including the present primate, and was unfailing in his reminder to us of the reality of the cross and of the importance of directing all of our desire, all of our longing, all of our thirsting towards Christ alone. And this is nothing but the essence of the monastic life. Now, with his falling asleep in the Lord, we are all reminded in the words of the hymn this evening that we are as a fleeting dream, a breath which does not endure, the flight of a passing bird, a ship which leaves no trace upon the sea. But at the same time, even in the face of our human fragility, each of us preserves in our heart the hope of the resurrection, and each of us has received a confirmation of the reality of that blessed and eternal state that awaits all of us. We have this hope and this confirmation through the example of all those who, like Metropolitan Herman, <coughs> labor for the one thing needful and serve the Lord and Master of our life. This evening, the newly departed Metropolitan Herman is surrounded by his fellow laborers in the vineyard, the members of the Holy Synod of Bishops of the Orthodox Church in America. His eminence, Archbishop Benjamin of San Francisco in the West, the diocese which Metropolitan Herman served as temporary administrator for a year. His eminence, 
Catholics and Bishops. His Eminence, Archbishop Michael of New York and the Diocese of New York and New Jersey. A diocese which for the time of Metropolitan Herman's primatial tenure was incorporated with the territory of the Archdiocese of Washington. His Grace, Bishop Daniel of Chicago and the Diocese of the Midwest, who himself labored with Metropolitan Herman and has brought with him a number of clergy from his diocese. His Grace, Bishop Alexei of Sitka and Alaska, who brings with him the prayers of the faithful of the Mother Diocese and the blessing of St. Herman, the first North American saint to be glorified and the one from whom Metropolitan Herman received the name in monastic tonsure. We are grateful for the participation of clergy from many dioceses and jurisdictions, as well as the presence of the current Chancellor of the Orthodox Church in America, Archbishop Alexander Rentel, and one of the most recent past chancellors, Archbishop Alexander Garkov, and Father John Williams will be with us tomorrow as well. Representing St. Vladimir's Seminary is Deacon Vitaly Pernyakov, who brings the condolences of Archbishop Chad Hatfield and the administration, faculty, and staff, and seminarians of St. Vladimir's. We are thankful for the presence and prayers of so many of you this evening. I ask that you continue to keep Metropolitan Herman in your prayers as he now enters into the mansions of heaven so long.
Thank you. 